and welcome to another live demonstration. As part of the Back to Basics series, I like to introduce you to new products on the market or interesting products that you may have not thought of a way of using them. So, De La Rowney artboard. So, what's an artboard? De La Rowney already have the papers that are on these boards available in pads or blocks or um, spiral pads. What they've done, and I'm, I'm really quite excited about these, is they've put that quality paper and well-known paper for the De La Rowney brand on to a board. So this is the Georgian Oil um, double primed linen texture surface, perfect for oils, um, acid free, but it is on a 1.4 mil board. I need to just slide it forward. Can you get that, Gary? Yeah, right. So why would I want it on a board? Because it now offers you great opportunity for really thick work, for um, heavy work. It, it's just a real, to be honest, I quite like the feel of a board. It just feels really substantial. And I'm not going to be worried about working on a canvas. I can practice on this, but also do final pieces on it. So that's the oil one, and we'll come back to that um, in a minute. System three. So again, the system three paper that's already in the glue pads, spiral pads and blocks, it's now on the board. So acrylic, uh, great for acrylics, it's acid free. It has a, a quite a smooth texture and I'm going to do uh, little swatches on the paper and then a little demonstration so we can see how it works. So again, on the board, Aquafine. So cellulose, um, acid free paper, it's got a, a knot surface um, or cold press, depending on what you call it. Again, it's mounted on board. Now, with a watercolour paper, we all know why a board is really important. Because if you're doing it very wet, um, paper, even the heavyweight 300 gram, can have some cockling or waving, depending on what you call it. This is laminated onto the board. I've got no fear of that. So now I've got a really portable item I can take with me and I don't have that fear of the paper cockling and maybe pools forming. So again, we'll have a play with the texture. So mixed media, mixed media paper, again available in the pads already, but this time laminated onto the board. So with mixed media, I can glue on it. I can work in pasto. I can work very finely because it's actually a very smooth um, paper. So let's have a look at this one first. And what I'm going to use is I've chosen some alcohol markers because depending on the paper you use, these will often bleed through, but it's on a board now. So I've got little fear of them bleeding through. So Stylefile is the brand I'm using for this. These are double-ended pens. So let's just have a quick look. It's not gonna work, is it? They're gonna roll off at the pen on the board. So one end, let's try the other end. I like the other end, to be honest, I will use that most. Look at how that works. What I want to show you is, I can't because Gary, has, no, he hasn't taped it down. I don't have that fear of the paper, the um, alcohol markers bleeding through because it's onto the board. So that's another bonus with these boards. So what I'm going to do is on each of these different boards is I'm going to just do a little demonstration, the same demonstration, so you can see how the mediums work, but you can also see how the pa paper works. So just going to do um, some leaves. I was out the other day trying to take pictures of conkers, but these leaves really, they, had, they were just touching the light. And I thought that was a really, um, lovely shape. I'm always looking at shapes because if you're sometimes stuck for something to draw, go out and take your camera and you, you even just down a green path. It's amazing what little things you find, little um, clover leaves and things like that, that if you just walk past, they're just green. But if you 
you know, use your camera and just take pictures, you'd be surprised with what things you will see. And then it just inspires you, because I was inspired by what looks like just a bunch of leaves. But I just think the shapes are lovely, the colours are nice, and so that's what I'm going to be using on and you'll see I'm doing it quite loose. This is purposely because it's a pen. It doesn't blend as well. So I'm just making it work for me with this nice loose style. But it's working really well on this paper. And that's the point is I want to show you the paper. And this one. Sorry. Oh, the lid goes on the top. I hadn't tried that before, so that was a good. And then there's a leaf behind here. It's got a little cut out. Well, obviously, either an insect has taken it. Leaving some um, areas of the paper, as you would do in a watercolour. A uh, darker colour might use the fine ends. So now I can start to just think about maybe a little bit of detail and what you need to look at even in very loose work is real structure so i'm looking at these leaves and i can see where the middle is coming down and the way the veins come out because different leaves will have different i'm not being totally honest with it because i want to then put um a micron pen on top plus I want to be very quick because I've got four of these to do but I am looking at the shape and you can see how very quickly I've managed to make that look like a leaf and possibly an almost recognizable type of leaf in the back this will be darker I like marker pens. I like them when you can just use them for jotting down ideas and thoughts and you don't know the composition you're going to be using. So just use a marker pen with the colours you're possibly going to use. I need some lines on that just to give it a little bit more. And then brown. So don't get stuck just using the same medium all the time. It's great to learn one medium and to get practiced in a medium, but sometimes it can hold you back from, because you get, I know I do it all the time. I'm always shouting and saying, I need some pictures just to inspire me, and give me a little bit more to think about and try something new. So very quick um, mixed media. So I'm now changing to micron pen and this I can now add a little bit more texture but you can see how well a difficult medium like the alcohol pens has actually gone on to this surface no bleeding I just can slip it forward it's not bled through I'm not finding that it's bleeding on the paper and, and leaving fuzzy lines which can happen and it's actually really nice to work on a solid surface. That's what I'm enjoying about this. I'm purposely making it very loose. I just like to have different textures within a, a sketch. And this is what it is, it's a sketch. But sometimes the sketches can be just as effective as a final piece of work because you're less are worried about how it finishes and then you get some lovely marks okay so just a quick finished mixed media study on the Dale Rowney art board so that was the mixed media um, board onto the aquafine so acid free paper perfect for watercolor and I'm going to be using Aquafine paints, you can use any watercolours, but as it's an Aquafine board and we're talking about the Dale Rowney ranges, I'm going to be using Aquafine paints. So I'm just going to use, again, my 
not traditional colours, blue, red and yellow, because it is simple. I don't want to complicate things. And I will change the different blue, I will change the different yellow, but I know what works. And this works for all the colours I need for this study. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change my brush because I forgot I want to do a wash. So the reason I'm changing my brush is I normally use the silver brush for all the work, but because I want to show you the texture and the surface of the paper, I need a brush that works well in showing you this, and this will be a natural hairbrush. This is a Kalinsky sable. I don't always like using it for the actual work, but that's preference. But I know it does work really well when I want to do washes and swatches to show you the paper. So I'm not sure if Gary can see. Of course I can see. <laughs> but this is a cellulose paper, so what I do find is it's not quite as soft as some cotton papers, but for me, I really like that. I like a cleaner edge. So that is the ultramarine, and that's gone on um, really nicely. Let's just move it around, see how it, well it moves around once it starts to dry. And that works really well. Let's drop in a bit of wet in wet. What uh, I can tell and see for the cellulose paper is it doesn't move and soften as easily but I know that for, from this paper it feels quite hard size quite smooth but I work with it so it's not a problem and as I've tested it I've tried it I know the characteristics of it I'll adapt and use those where to put brush so mix in the colors gone back to my trusted all-rounder because it keeps the point um, a nice synthetic brush mixing blue actually you're supposed to mix the yellow first into the blue um, so you're supposed to go yellow and then add the blue and that's when you can get the colors but I sometimes forget the reason you do it is because it's easier from the light colour to make the colour than it is to keep adding light to the dark colour. It doesn't really matter which way you do it, as long as you do it a way that works for you. Okay, so just adding some of the light and yellow onto the page. Clean off. And like I say, I can feel that it isn't a soft paper. It's quite a hard paper, which... It's just a characteristic of that paper. So now to blend, working quite lightly. And again, very quickly, because I don't want you to sit there and watch me paint the same thing over and over again without um, learning something from it. So if I just work very quickly. Again, pick up. I can use detail at the end. What I want to do is put color on. And what I want to show you is how quickly you can work. So it leaves, these ones are green. Um, once they start to turn, I think they're going to go into the red. Um, so I can go out in a few weeks. It may not be even that long. It may need to be sooner. And then get the leaves if they're just turning into that really lovely golden orangey. I think these have a pink tinge to them actually. So another, it's another thing to do, you know, I've taken these pictures of them in the autumn, just as they're starting to turn, you know, take pictures of the same thing over and over again in different seasons. And then you can, you know, learn about the, the item, but you also, you know, can see the changes and see the different colors. So now I'm just going to I'm keeping this quite light. Normally I like a lot stronger colour, but I want to see how the paper copes with the very... That's a bit too even colour. 
Again, I'm not overworked it. It's, it's a sketch, it's a study. It's just to show you the quality of the paper. You can see the fine. And actually, that's dried quite quickly. And I can guess with a cellulose paper, it won't dry as quickly and so it'll still be a bit soft, which is great if you want to have those soft lines. And that's what a lot of people aim for. But I'm much more of a person who quite likes sharper lines. So this drying quite quickly for me, I, can, I like. Okay, bit of change of colour, a bit of red. This isn't an exercise in drawing leaves. It's a, just looking at the paper. It's not quite. So I'm making a brown. So the blue, red and yellow mixed together. That'll do. Fine. What I can see is that I know watercolours do dry um, about half their strength and I feel this has dried quite light so all I can do is go back in and strengthen again. It's much easier to do this and strengthen the colour than it is to take it back off, to lift off. But what I might do, talking about lifting off, I might try. Now this is dried, I just want to try and see how well it does lift off. Leave that because I will overwork it. So lifting off is a technique you do use in watercolour and you need to try different papers and see how well um, colours lift off. Plus the colours can be a staining colour which means they don't lift off very well either. So let's just see. This I, I'm sure from the feel of this paper it's going to be quite a tough paper which means I'm going to be able to lift off and actually really scrub onto the paper. Need a bit of kitchen roll. So that's lifting back, so you can make really nice clouds into that. I'm going to really work and wet this paper because I know it's not going to disintegrate. I want to get it very wet for you, so you can see it's not cockling. So I really like this. See there, I've scrubbed into it really well. The paper hasn't started to disintegrate or move. I'm getting no cockling. Um, so great for watercolours. So this was the Aquafine board. So Aquafine paper, daily round Aquafine paper, laminated onto a board. So there's two of the products. What I think we'll do is we'll take a short break and I'll come back and I'll show you the um, System 3 and the Georgian Oil. So join me in a minute. Let us bring out the artist in you. If you'd like to learn how to paint or improve your painting, the SAA is here to inform, encourage and inspire you every step of the way. When you become an SAA member, you get so many benefits, including the free bi-monthly newsletter Paint, packed with inspiring step-by-step -step projects, fascinating articles, and detailed information to get your creative juices flowing. Discounts on over 13,000 art products featured on the SAA website and in the Home Shop catalog, with free order line and free delivery in the UK mainland. A devoted SAA team on hand to answer your questions and give you the confidence and motivation you need to start painting and develop at a pace that suits you. Plus a free welcome pack filled with gifts and practical help to get you started as well as the opportunity to make friends with like-minded people. The best thing to be a member is, is the inspiration from the magazines, to be able to purchase things at a very reasonable price. Yeah, you get the um, reduction on all the materials, the uh, advice you get. I can shop from home. It's a community. It seems like a, a very friendly sort of organisation. If somebody's thinking of joining, don't spend too long thinking. Just join. They'll love it. Welcome back. So now I'm just going to show you the other two um, types of artboard. So I'm going to start with the System 3. 
and using again system three acrylics just to keep it within the brand it will work with um, other brands as well so the system three acid free board um, it's got a very fine texture which is perfect for acrylics and again it's on this lovely board so why would i want this with acrylics because acrylics you can use very wet like you would watercolor but a lot of the time you don't well it means i can paint on quite thick so i'm going to show you just a couple of ways where's my brush um you can use acrylics so i'm using again a synthetic brush I'm just going, oh, this is one of my favourite colours. I'm going to use it anyway. So I want to show you the texture of the paper. Just try and wet that a little bit more. Just show you if you can see the texture. So acrylic, water-based, so you can put them on um, quite thickly or water down. Um, if you're watering down a lot, I would use a medium um, because then you keep the adhesive properties of acrylics. They're so versatile, it allows you to do so much on so many surfaces. But also, acrylics can be used. Not got enough paint out, Gary. Uh, squeeze some more out. Squeeze right. some more out. No one will notice. <laughs> um, you can use them quite thickly or in pesto. Um, which means you can use your um, painting knife and just create textures and really feel. And this is quite smooth. It's not got the, quite the same texture as a canvas, but it's got the um, rigidity to allow me to be able to put lots of layers and build it up without it sagging. So again, what I'm going to do is going to do a little um demonstration just i think by doing these little demonstrations you can actually really get a true feel of um the paper the board as you would use it i'm going to just swap this was the brush i was using earlier it's a synthetic brush so i know i can use it for um, acrylics what i'm going to do is really make sure that i clean it and really get into the ferrule because Acrylics will dry permanent and waterproof. And if they get into the ferrule, it starts to ruin your brush. So I can use the same brush. I'm just going to make sure when I finish with it that I clean well. And I'm putting it on quite thickly with a little bit of texture. Just because that, I, that's what you can do with acrylics. I just love the acrylic. This is turquoise. Now, I hadn't tried this. I found it hanging around. Um, so I wanted to see what it was like. I might get really excited and actually use the board what it, for the way it can do. I'm just, I can't get in there. Create some lovely texture. Oh, yes, that's nice. What I'm struggling with is I'm having to just make sure that I don't cover the board and go like this because Gary will shout at me but look at that look at the textures you can make with the painting knife let's just draw the stalks oh yeah so actually I'm not going to be using a brush that was keeping me too rigid I'm just going to see what I can do with this the knife and what marks I can make I'm also not mixing my colours fully so I'm allowing them to be mix themselves on the page. Okay. That's a little bit too rigid on that side. It's just too yellow. Uh, what I do find is this is something you need to practice because you need to think about how I hold it. Um, there's different types of painting knives as well, different shapes. Choose one that, you know, works for your style. And I'm per really purposely um, 
making sure that um, I'm putting it on quite thickly. Just so you can see the quality of the board. It's nice using some of that dry brush. Dip in. I mean, I could be more controlled. I could go into a brush and really create lovely leaf shapes. And I might do. It depends how I feel or how much time we've got. We've got plenty of time. Got plenty of time. Always got plenty of time. That's not... I don't think I've got enough paint on there, it's not coming off. Okay. Just trying to show that that's inside the leaf so it's darker. And again here, darker. But I can mix, I can go back to a brush. You know, I can start to add detail to it. But you're not going to get this kind of texture. I've lost that leaf behind a bit, little bit, that doesn't matter. I'm not going to get that same quality of texture I would do with a um, brush. So mixing some red into that green, it's going to give me a brown. I think I'm being a bit too, um, I'm not mixing enough colour. I'm being a bit stingy. And this palette really isn't um, a acrylic palette because I can't get in there but I was using the same palette for all the mediums just to make it easy um, on me to be honest so I don't have to keep changing each time so again with anything find out what works for you because I found out this isn't working brilliantly for me but it's working well enough so that's better I've got more colour now Gary Yay. <laughs> so I want to pick that up with the edge and be able to just add some brown. Just mix them a bit together. Let's see what else I can do. Bring it in. Scrape back. I can now use the thickness of the paint to actually create veins. Uh, for what this one looks like now. It's not, it's not as controlled as the other two pieces, but this is how you play. This is how you discover different ways of working and different qualities of the paint. I mean, for me, this isn't a finished piece of work. This is not something I'm going to frame, but I've enjoyed doing it. And I think that's the main point. So I'm just going to try and bring back this leaf behind with some of this brown. Yes, it's very different to the original, and it does look like leaves a little bit. But the main thing is I'm just enjoying using and putting it on with a painting knife. And so I'm adapting and changing it as I'm going along just to suit what I need. Let's use that and drag it down, give it more of a point. Okay, so not the best really, but you can see what I'm talking about, the quality of the paper, that's what I'm really trying to show you. So it's going to take some really nice, um, thick paint, but um, it works quite well in a wet style. So that's the acrylic, and I'm not going to close it because it will stick. I'll drop it on the floor. Sorry, Gay. Quite loud, that. That was quite loud. Um, to the Georgian um, oil pad. So this time... This is a triple, no, double primed um, Georgian oil paper, exactly the same as in their pads and spirals, this time laminated onto the board. Um, it has quite a obvious linen texture, a bit more like a canvas and suitable for oils. So I'm going to be using um, Georgian oils with a brush, I think, because um, the painting knife um, wasn't as as good as I hoped on that one so I'm just going to squeeze out some oils some of the oils you'll see that the binder the linseed oil comes out first that's normal 
on, especially on some colours. It's just the way that often the tubes have been stored and the binder rises to the top. It's easy enough to mix. What I will do is use a painting knife to mix my colours. Now, it's always advisable to have painting knives with acrylics and oils and use them to mix your colours. The reason for this, I'm just going to clean that, else it's going to dry and I'm going to ruin the brush, um, is you can mix with brushes, but what you do is you push the paint into the ferrule and that makes it harder to clean. So to protect your brushes, which are your best friend really, um, when painting and you get the favourite one, you get familiar with the type of brush. To protect that and stop you losing it at some time, use a painting knife, these are just plastic ones, to mix your colours. Um, and mix them on your palette with the painting knife and then you can apply with them with the brush. So I'm just going to show you the quality of the um, linen surface. I've not got enough paint out again. I know. Right. Okay, painting now. So I'm going to use this lovely alizarin and just show you how it can go onto this surface. I'm going to scrape it down so you can see the surface underneath. And what this will do, it's been designed for oil paint, any brand to be honest. If you put oil paint on a surface that's not suitable for it, you will see that the oil will start to leach around it. This has been primed to stop that from happening. So let's just do the final piece. Um, traditionally, you use a hog brush for um, oil paints. The main reason for this is hog brushes are perfectly suitable for solvents. So these are oil paints. I need a solvent, which I'm going to be using in my little faithful tin. I haven't cleaned this out for months. What I've done is I filled it up. I keep using it, put the lid on and what happens, the pigment drops to the bottom. So it self cleans. Every now and then I'll just have to um, take the insert out and scrape out all the pigment, but it's very self cleaning. So I can just put the lid on and forget about it. And the hog brushes are really suitable for solvents. What they don't like is a lot of water. So if you're using water mixable oils um, and you use hog brushes, you would tend to find they get brittle and split because it's the water gets into the hairs and cause them to get brittle. So hog brushes traditionally used um, alongside solvents, but remember with water mixable, try and use a different kind of brush. I'm going to use this brush. This is an oil and acrylic brush. It's a synthetic brush, but it's perfectly suitable to be used with solvents. So just picking up some of the yellow and just dab it on. I'm using the shape of the brush this time. This is a filbert, so it's got that rounded end. And I, I like that shape because you can use the edge to create a fine line, but also use the shape, the rounded end just to create texture. So just dabbing it on. I used ultramarine blue with this yellow and I think it's quite a makes quite a dull green but it's fine. Again this is another thing to think about mixing your greens but that's another story altogether. This is looking at the texture of the paper and I'm purposely keeping it quite soft oil paints are lovely what you can do is you can mix and blend and get really soft um, layers oil paints they take to be fully dry they take six months to a year um, depending on the color can be touch dry within a few days to a week but this is the beauty about oil paints is you can blend and you can come back to them so again, it's learning your materials, learning your medium. But you can see, because I know they're not going to dry, I can keep softening, I keep, can keep adding colour, I can work over, work into. I 
and I'm not overly worried because I can take it back with solvents. Oil painting is a really nice medium to use because you can fiddle and faff this time. Normally I say don't fiddle and faff, but you can actually because you can go back in and you, you can overdo and you can keep repeat, keep going back. If you do faff, what you tend to do is you keep going back and doing the same thing over and over again. So sometimes it is worth leaving it. But with this, you can, you know, have a little bit more fun and you can let yourself keep working on areas. Okay, that's done. Okay, let's see if I can bring out, use the edge to bring out some veins. I think this I would normally drop into a much finer brush, but this will do. What it's actually doing is it's scraping out some of the colour and showing the colour underneath. Like I said, these are studies. I'm not overly thinking about a final piece. I'm kind of thinking about the materials on the paper. Right, nearly put it in the water, that wouldn't have been helpful. What I do like to do, if I am using something very fine, I'm going to use a rubber colour shaper because painting knife to mix some colour into that green, mix some red just to create a brown. Scrape it all up, get a bit more blue, That'll do. that's fine. I'm just going to use the colour shaper, load it up because then I have a little bit more control but it's also very easy to clean. You can see how you can use it just to add detail. Actually, that's worked really well. It's scraping back, exposing the colour underneath, which is really perfect for this veins. Okay. That's absolutely perfect. See how that's made a real difference. That's got a shape there. Let's fill that in. I do have to be a little bit more careful because I can see that it is um, quite hard, it's not as brush, um, so it's going to be taking the colour off. Okay, look at that, that's excellent, I like that. So I know the technical terms, that's graffitio, so it's scraping back, exposing the surface below, but I think this works really nicely with this, because I can bring that back there. much move it create a little bit more jagged lines because they do a little bit more jagged line so again not going to keep working into that you can see the quality of that um, surface so all four of, of the De La Rowney paper surfaces all available now on an art board which it's the artboard quality that I think is really a um, great thing with these um, pads. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I like to bring you new and interesting things. Um, and join me next week for another live demonstration. <laughs>